Welcome Clinic Review family. This is number seven of our farm videos. We're going to be doing five questions of the 50 essential meds that you have to know. So welcome. Go to clinicreviews.com to see when any of our upcoming reviews are. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and use the bigger screen. I just think it's easier for you to see it. All right. You're caring for a client with Hashimoto's. Which of the following medications orders would you question? Acetaminophen, Zolpidem, level thyroxine, multivitamin. All right. Which ha, let's talk about there's two components to this question you need to know. Hashimoto's. You got to know what Hashimoto's is. Hashimoto's think hypomoto. Hashimoto's think hypomoto. And hypomoto is hypothyroidism. Okay. Hypothyroidism. So a person who is has hypothyroidism is prone to being lethargic right? Because they're low thyroid and thyroid, um, think of it as hypometabolism. So they're kind of, they gain weight, they don't have a lot of energy, they don't have a real clear thinking, and they're sort of lethargic. So the issue with Hashimoto's is they're a little bit lethargic, and we don't want to give them anything that causes sedation. Now, so the first thing you have to know what Hashimoto's is. Secondly, you have to know what it means to question an order. Questioning an order means it could harm the patient. So when I think Hashimoto's, I think, well, generally speaking, because we're not talking about a specific patient with Hashimoto's. I mean, we're not talking about some specific patient with some specific problem like cancer. All they, all we know about them is their hypothyroid. That's it. We don't, there's no comorbidities. We don't know any labs. All we know is what is generally speaking contraindicated in a patient with Hashimoto's. And I know anything that causes sedation is contraindicated. So that's what I'm going to question. So do any of these meds cause sedation? Acetaminophen, it's for pain, but it doesn't cause sedation, y'all. If you think it does, you're way overthinking, okay? Zolpidem, Zolpidem. Uh, Zolpidem is actually for sleep. I think that's Ambien, I think. That's actually a sleep med. I don't know if I want to give that. Level thyroxine. Uh, that they have to have that they're low thyroid. I got to give them their level thyroxine y'all multivitamin. That's just a multivitamin. There's nothing wrong with that. So the only one that causes sedation and actually its purpose is to cause sedation is Ambien for sleep. So that's the one I have to question. You're caring for a client who is admitted with syncope that's passing out and has been diagnosed with Addison's disease. Which medication would you expect to be ordered? Level thyroxine, methylprednisolone, pregabalin, or dust? I can't say it, do tasteride. All right, that's a hard one. Not when I say, it. all right, um, Addison's disease. So the question is, what is Addison's disease? Addison's disease, y'all, is under secretion of the adrenal cortex. So think AD adrenal cortex, AD Addison's. AD adrenal cortex, AD Addison's. So if it's under secretion of the adrenal cortex, what does the adrenal cortex secrete? They secrete stress hormones like mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids. That's what they secrete. Okay. So if that's under secretion of glucocorticoids, then we're going to have to give steroids, steroids. Okay. That's what they're going to have to take. Addison's disease takes steroids. It's the opposite of Cushing's. Cushing's is the over secretion of the adrenals. Addison's is under secretion of the adrenal. So we're going to give steroids. So that's the correct answer. Levothyroxine is for synth is synthroid is for Hashimoto's. Pregabalin is Lyricus for neuropathic pain. And Dutasteride is Avodart for BPH. Not one I get very often, I'll be honest with you. Not one I get very often. All right, next one. You're caring for a client who's been prescribed methylergonavine postpartum. Which of the following would you teach her about this medication? Can I be honest with you? I have had to memorize this one because I'm not a postpartum nurse. Well, I'm not a labor and delivery nurse. Honestly, I had to memorize this one. So methylergonavine is used to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Okay, it's used to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. I don't even know how to tell you to remember that vine. Is there anything about vine? If any of you can think of a good way to remember this one, that it's for postpartum hemorrhage or prevent postpartum hemorrhage, put it in the chat. Uh, some rule that's like, will make it easy. I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. So it's prevent postpartum hemorrhage. And it's one of the only meds they take that they're not allowed to breastfeed when they take it. 
We always tell women to pet breastfeed. We never tell women to pump and dump or not to breastfeed. Like always tell them to breastfeed. This is an exception to that rule. So don't ever tell a woman not to breastfeed. It's generally true that they always breastfeed. Even if they have chicken pox, y'all, they can still breastfeed, okay? So they can always breastfeed. But this one drug, they have to pump and drop for 12 hours after they take it, all right? So let's look at the answers. This drug is contraindicated with heavy postpartum bleeding. False. It's for postpartum bleeding, so that's false. Breastfeeding should be initiated as soon as possible to help contract the uterus. False. Now, that's true. That's true in general after delivery, but this question is about this drug. And it says, you know that because it said, what would you teach her about this medication? This medication. So you have to pick ones that are true about this medication. And two is false because you don't want to breastfeeding when they take it. Three, she must pump and dump for 12 hours after administration of this drug. True. It should be initiated before the baby is born. False. False, false, false. It's given after the baby is born to prevent hemorrhage. Um, five, it's given to help manage postpartum bleeding. True. This medication will help the delivery of the placenta. That's true. Okay. So that is actually true. It does help delivery of the placenta. So I hope you learned something about that med. I don't have any secrets to tell you about it. It's just one that uh, you should know. You, you know, I mean, look, if you don't know it, you miss it. Who cares? You can miss, you can miss questions on the NCLEX and still pass y'all. You can miss. So don't be all freaking out about it. But, um, you know, you might as well know it if you can, right? Right. You're preparing to discharge a client with chronic kidney failure who will be taking Epoetin at home. Which of the following statements show that your client understands your teaching? All right. If you don't know Epoetin is, it's to promote production of red blood cells because people with kidney disease tend to be anemic. Okay. All right. This is a sad question. If I get a headache, I may take some acetaminophen. I will take the Epoetin with a full glass of water. I will use a new needle every time I inject the Epoetin. If I get nauseous, I may take some aluminum mag hydroxide, which is Malox. I will keep the vial of epoetin in the refrigerator. I will notify the healthcare provider if I start to have severe chest pain. I will always give the epoetin in my hip muscle. So it sounds to me like epoetin is given by injection. Now, I did know that, but let's say you didn't know that. You go, okay, well, okay, most, and, you, and it's okay to make some interpretations based on the answers based on the answer. So you go, okay, it's given by injection. So what are just some generally true things? Because maybe maybe I know what epoetin is for. Maybe I know it's given by injection, but I don't know that much about it. All right. This is the time where you say, I'm going to pick answers that are generally true about medications given by injection. That's what I'm going to do. Since I know what it's for and I know how it's given, but I don't know that much about it. Other than that, I'm just going to pick med, pick answers that are generally true for injection meds. If I get a headache, I may take some acetaminophen. Well, I know headache is one of the most common side effects and we don't call the doc about side effects. We don't can't, we don't hold the med for side effects. We just treat it. So that sounds like a good idea. Number one, sounds like a good idea. Sure. If you get a headache, take some acetaminophen. Sounds good. I'll take the epoetin with a full glass of water. Now, if this were a PO med, I would say, yeah, sure. Why not? But it's not a PO med, y'all. It's an injection. There's no reason to take it, can you imagine? All right, I got to drink this full glass of water before I give myself this injection. I can't imagine that. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm not going to pick it. If it doesn't make sense, I'm not going to pick it. If you don't know, go back and watch my SATA videos. I talk a lot about common sense. Three, I will use a new needle every time I inject the epoetin. Well, that sounds good. That's like something I teach people. Absolutely. If I get nauseous, I may take some aluminum mag hydroxide malox. Okay. This really doesn't have anything to do with epoetin. It has to do with the chronic kidney disease. And I never, ever, ever teach people to take over-the-counter meds that have an electrolyte in them when they have kidney disease. Because I know one of the problems with kidney disease is they retain electrolytes, right? I'm looking for high mag. I'm watching for high potassium. I'm watching for high calcium. These are my concerns for someone's in chronic kidney disease. So I don't want them taking a med that has magnesium in it because I'm already concerned they're going to have a high mag. So no, I'm not going to do number four. Five, I'll keep the vial of epoetin in the fridge. Yeah. You know, I can't think of a single med they can't keep in the fridge, a liquid med. As far as I know, all liquid meds can be kept in the fridge as a general principle. And remember the NCLEX is testing you on general principles. So I'm picking number five. I will noti notify the healthcare provider if I start to get severe chest pain. Well, that sounds like a good idea, y'all. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, if you're having severe chest pain, no, 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 don't worry about it. No, yes, contact me, contact the doc. I will always give the epoetin in my hip muscle. All right, I don't like the answers that have always and never, but I don't ever teach people to give in the same place every time. Don't we always tell people to rotate sites? That's what I do. I'm not picking seven. So I liked one. I liked three. I liked five and I liked six. And those, my friends, are the correct answers. And it's a good thing those are the right answers because I wrote this question. <laughs> if I don't know the answers to my own question, I'm in trouble. Okay, you're caring for a woman who is five days postpartum. All right, five days postpartum. She had the baby five days ago. Okay, she's complaining of abdominal pain. Okay, not good. Green purulent vaginal discharge, not good. Abdominal tenderness and her fundus is palpable two centimeters above the umbilicus. It's supposed to be palpable below, by the way. She's had a difficult labor and delivery and says she's very anxious about being sick with the newborn at home. Which of the following orders will you implement first? All right. If you haven't watched my prioritization lectures, go back and rewatch my two prioritization lectures because I'm going to talk really quickly about something I teach about on that video. And that is when I have a question with one patient who has a problem and lots of symptoms and all those symptoms are in the question. They're all in the question. All the problems are in the question. And then it says, which order will you implement first? I always implement the order that addresses the physical, objective physical problem. Objective physical problem. So what do I think is the problem here? Well, it sounds to me like she's got an infection, right? That sounds like, like the problem here, doesn't it? It doesn't say that, but that is pretty obvious. That's what the problem is. Now, what are some of her other concerns? Pain. Pain is physical, but it's subjective, not objective. Abdominal tenderness, subjective. Fundus is palpable. That's objective. And that is tells me that that's, there's something wrong. That's an indicator of infection. Uh, she says she had a difficult labor. That's um, subjective. She's feeling anxious. That's subjective. So the anoxaparin, let me see what these orders are for. The anoxaparin is not for anything I can see here. So I'm not going to implement one when I don't see that it's for a specific problem. I'm, at least I'm not going to implement it first. I might Im implement it, but not first. It's not for a specific problem. Alprazolam, okay, that's a benzo, and that's for her anxiety. Fine, not crazy about giving it, but fine. That That's legitimate. Levofloxacin, 500 milligrams. Oh, that's an antibiotic. That's for the infection, which is her physiological objective problem. Acetaminophen is for the pain. Pain is subjective. So I have to do the objective physiological object. I have to address the objective physiological problem first. So I have to give the level floxacin. And remember, I know in real life, and they know in real life, that you can do more than one thing at a time if you want to. You can run. And look, in real life, if you want to run and give her the Xanax and the, and the Tylenol first, that's up to you. But what I'm telling you is on the NCLEX, they're testing to see if you know what her biggest problem is. And are you going to address that first? They're not testing if you're nice. And I'll say, well, I'd be nice and give her pain medicine first. Okay, that's good, but not so much on the NCLEX. You're just going to get it wrong. Wrong. Okay. So if you don't understand what I just did, go back and rewatch um, my prioritization lecture. Okay. All right. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. There are three more videos to come out. I'll try to keep them coming in a reasonable time period and I'll see you later. Bye.